Hey gold diggers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I wanted to share with you an experience I had for the very first time recently and that was going to an exclusively gay island where basically anything goes. So I want to tell you all about it, give you all the dirt, um, <laughs> and just tell you about how it went because it was very exciting and it was very new to me. Um, it was probably one of the best experiences of my life. I'm taking a little break from my story time series that I've been doing about when I was first getting into sex work because Aww. I think we all need a break. <laughs> If you know what I mean. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, the people who actually watched my previous video about the first time I ever auditioned as a stripper seemed to really, really like it. Um, but it didn't get that many views. But the people who actually did watch it seemed to like love it. So I'm going to link that right up here. If you haven't seen it yet, I suggest you go watch it. It got some good reviews. Um, but yeah, I don't know. My past story times haven't been getting that many views. Um, so I'm going to try to be more consistent about my uploading and maybe my views will go up. I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to try that for a while, but if it doesn't work, I'm just going to go back to being a thought. And only making thought videos. So <laughs> please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my recent uploads um, or future posts, it would mean a lot to me because I don't want to go back to just being a <laughs> Please don't make me go back. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into today's story time. So the name of this gay island that I went to is called Fire Island, and it's off the coast of New York, and three months out of the year, it's a gay hot spot. It's super fine. It's super hard to find like a house or a room to even stay in because all the gays want to be on this freaking island, right? And hearing other people's stories about Fire Island, I knew it was going to be a wild time. Um, basically anything goes. There's a lot of public hookups. Um, there's a lot of cruising. There's a lot of partying. Um, but then there's also like just a lot of chilling, um, cooking at the house, uh, just walking around and enjoying the nature. So I was super excited. I don't think a lot of people would expect this about me because the way I portray myself online, but I have not hooked up with anybody in over a year. I'm really not into just like hooking up. I think I'm more focused on being in a long-term relationship, so I don't really hook up. But going to this island after hearing the stories and about the orgies and stuff that happens there. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna hook up a lot on this trip. I, that was my main goal. I was very focused on getting the D, if you know what I mean. So that was my goal. That was my intention going into this trip. And let me tell you, I got a, everything I wanted and more. So I can't really tell you explicitly about those experiences on YouTube, I have to p keep it PG on here, um, but I'm gonna have the R-rated version on my OnlyFans, and you can find the link to my OnlyFans in the description of this video, so click below. The R-rated version on my OnlyFans is the exact same setup like this, except I'm wearing much less clothes, and I get a lot more excited because I'm retelling my stories. Anyways, so let's get into the PG version. So I've never been fired on this is my first time and one of my really good friends knew that and he happened to find a room that was available and he invited me out. So I hopped on that opportunity. I was like, fuck yes. And this was for 4th of July weekend. So it's a great weekend to have your first experience in Fire Island because that's one of the craziest weekends, like craziest party weekends. Um, of the entire year. So I left late on Friday and flew from Fort Lauderdale into New Jersey. So I land in New Jersey, I get my bags, and um, I start heading to the dock that takes you to Fire Island because you can only get to Fire Island by ferry. And I arrived late though. It, it was like 10 p.m. I wasn't gonna be able to catch a public ferry, so I got a private water taxi. So I get in an Uber from the airport, 
and start driving to the dock that I'm supposed to be at. And I've never been to Fire Island before, but from what I've heard, I mean, like, I feel like it's just all rich people, you know? It's just like rich gays, and that's what I was expecting. So on this drive over to the dock, I was like, this doesn't look like what I was expecting. All the houses were like really quaint, like New England homes that were like much older and like small. Um, I was like, this isn't like the type of town that I would expect to be close to Fire Island, you know? So I'm like, I wonder if the whole island's gonna be like this. I've never seen like the architecture from Fire Island before. I didn't really look up pictures either. I just wanted to be pleasantly surprised. So I was like, okay, this is homey <laughs> as we're driving through and I finally get to the dock. I didn't know if I was at the right place. It was like so dark out. There was no lights on this dock. Um, but a security guard told me, he's like, yep, this is the right dock. If you're getting a water taxi, go wait at the end. So I walk down to the end. It's completely dark and wait there for like 15 minutes. And then the water taxi, which is called H2O Limo, super sweet name, <laughs> um, came and picked me up. And so I hop on the boat, put my luggage on, and it starts downpouring. We go across the intercoastal, um, headed to Fire Island Pines. And I am so excited at this point, but also the water is so rough and that you have to go fast or else water will get in the boat. So you, they have to go full speed. And I, I was scared I was gonna like, be thrown out like it was like bumping so much it was it was actually really fun <laughs> i loved the private water taxi we get to the dock and there's just so many gays already and i'm like yes so, <laughs> so um we get to the dock and i hop off and it is such a cute little place it's they have um at this dock they just have like a little restaurant like a little convenience store um and then just like signs telling you where to go and on fire island there's no roads i did not know that until i went out there but i mean i guess it makes sense there's no cars you can't take a car out there but there's literally no roads there's only docks to walk on so there's just like wooden docks to walk on from like each house and it was so cool so you're like walking through um the forest basically and i'm on my way to find the random house that i'm staying at and i don't know any of these people besides my one friend who's staying there so yeah I start walking to the house and as i'm looking around me like these houses are massive. They're super modern, but also have like a beachy vibe. And I'm like, okay, this is what I expected. This looks like money. <laughs> Another thing I noticed about Fire Island, um, like as soon as I got there, is it smells so good. Um, I mean, it's called the pines, but it literally just smells like pines, like pine trees. Um, <sighs> pine trees everywhere, it was super beautiful. And I immediately fell in love the first time my foot hit that dock because I've never been anywhere like this. That doesn't have roads and you're just walking on docks and it just feels like such a beach town. So anyways, after walking through the forest, just getting so excited about being in this magical place, I find the house that I'm staying at. And everyone had texted me, they went ahead and they went to the party without me just because I did come in so late. Um, and they had sent me the flyer for this party. And the flyer said, wild and nasty Friday underwear welcome party. So I was like, oh shit. I'm getting thrown into the thick of it. <laughs> like from the get go, I'm getting the fire hailing experience. I was kind of nervous because I didn't know what wild and nasty meant at the party, but I was gonna find out soon.
So I go into the house, I drop my bags, and I'm like looking for the bathroom. And one of my friends comes running down the stairs, and I had no idea he's gonna be staying in this house. And I'm like, oh my gosh, hey, how are you? And like we hug, I'm like, I was not expecting you. Um, I thought everyone went to the party. And he said, yeah, everyone went to the party, but I stayed behind and just thought I would go with you, which was like really sweet of him to say, but I think he stayed behind just to do shots. <laughs> because there was eight people in this house to two bathrooms. <laughs> so anyways, I was happy he stayed behind though. <laughs> and, um, so I dropped my bags, I changed into underwear, um, and then put clothes over it because it was like cold. So I put on like a hoodie and just some jeans and we were off to the party. So he said, we have to go through the meat rack to get to the party. And he said, do you know what the meat rack is? I said, no, it's the meat rack. And he told me that it's the gay cruising area in the woods. So he's like, when you come out here, there's a lot of guys looking for action. What's up? A lot of guys hooking up. It's just Hello, people cutie. coming to me and hook up. So we're walking through it and I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> like this is what I came here for. And it starts to pour. So it's raining again. It's getting really muddy in the woods. It, there's obviously no one out there looking for action when it's raining this hard. So I'm like, Shoot. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come back another day. We get to the party and we're about to go in and I'm nervous from this flyer. Wild and nasty underwear party. So we go up and we check in our clothes. You take off all your clothes and I was wearing just like underwear. I was wearing like see-through striped underwear kind of um, from Charlie's. They were super cute actually. And um, we go into a party. So, we get into the party, and it's f***ing packed. And they're playing, like, a variety of music, like some EDM, some, like, pop music. So, it's, like, pretty good. And so, we go in, and we start pushing through to go find the rest of our friend group, because I guess a lot of them are out here. It is so hot and sweaty in this place and there, it's just full of men in underwear. So I'm looking around and it's like all guys my age, which is cool, but I'm into older guys. I was looking to hook up with an older guy and I found it eventually, but that's gonna come later in the story. We push in to our friends and um, we're saying hi to everybody. Everybody's partying, having a great time. Definitely on a little bit of a different level than I was just cause I had just arrived. I still wasn't drinking, uh, but I was doing G. So I didn't stay completely sober, but I was still responsible. This club, it's like a small, it kind of looks like a dive bar, I'm not gonna lie. It's like, kind of like a dive bar, and then it's separated by a curtain down the middle. So I can tell you the other side of that curtain, that's where all the wild and nasty was. It was real nasty. It's just like a guy giving like everyone like massages. <laughs> He's like touching their butts and stuff. And there were so many guys getting side of this curtain and like I'm not ready for that yet <laughs> I'm not like I've never been to a party like this I've like I've never been to like like a sex party and it was just so weird because there's like people like dancing having fun and there's some like getting right next to them I'm like what the hell I was intimidated but it didn't take long for me to get warmed up to the idea and join the drama fun so <gasps> First, I was just like dancing with my friends, doing laps around the club, and I was like, I want to see somebody getting <laughs> So we go to the other side of the curtain. We're like walking around, Come getting in everyone's business, like, ooh, what's going on over here? Come on, all the stuff strangers. Down. <laughs> yeah, so it's like a fun night, just like dancing. So many of my friends from South Florida were in Fire Island, and I had no idea they were gonna be there at the same time. So that was really cool. But my first hookup. Um, since not having hooked up in an entire year was at that party. And there's this guy and he was up on a stage and he was dancing with his uh and he's dancing with his hot dog out. <laughs> and 
it was really hot. And this other guy was going up and um, kissing the hot dog. So I decided to go up and kiss it too. And that happened to be my first hookup of the night. But it didn't just stop at one hookup. I ended up hooking up with four more people. <laughs> but we got to keep it PG on here, so I can't say much more about it. If you want to hear the rest, click the link down in my description and join my OnlyFans. Anyways, at 4 a.m., after hooking up with a lot of different people, making out with a lot of guys, um, thank God I am vaccinated. At 4 a.m., we decide to leave. And people just don't sleep in Fire Island because we were off to another party at 4 a.m. in the morning. So we go off to this other house party and it's like, it's pretty chill actually. Um, I take a little disco nap there on my friend's shoulder. And then when I wake back up, uh, he's like, let's get in the pool. So we all get in the pool. Um, we're in the pool until sunrise. And there's probably, you know, like 10 of us out there. And it went down. Oh, I wish I could talk more on YouTube. Anyways, let's get to the next day. Let's just fast forward to the next day. So after the pool party, we're all walking home. It's probably like 8 a.m. now. Um, and as we're walking, we see deer, and there's a mama deer, and there's a baby deer, and they're drinking out of a puddle. And they're so cute far away, but when you get close, they're like missing patches of hair. And these deer looked like they were on a bender, just like all the gays were. Like. find out they always tell you like not to pet the deer like the deer are so used to people like you could pet them if you wanted to but don't pet them because they have Lyme's disease and like all these other diseases and that's why their hair is falling out and they look like meth heads so yeah we it was super early in the morning we're like oh my gosh everyone's all <laughs> and then um we go home and and fall asleep for like maybe like four hours and then wake up and damn, I can't tell that part either. Someone came over, who was like one of my friends. I texted him to come over and he did. Can't say anything on here because it's stupid YouTube. <laughs> then it was time to go to the next party. And this party was, I forget the, whoever wrote um, James and the Giant Peach, uh, they were having a party after this author for my friend's Patty's birthday. Um, and they call this house Viagra Falls. And it has like this big water feature and it was a mansion. It was beautiful, it was massive. And everyone was dressed up. I didn't know the theme, so I didn't bring an outfit on theme. I was super sad. But everyone was just dressed up so crazy and the costumes looked amazing. It was such a fun party. Um, after a few hours of being there and dancing, I left and went home with three guys. <laughs> um, so we took a little, oh, I wouldn't say it was a break. No one was resting. We were all, hmm. So we did what we did. <laughs> And then we went and got some pizza, and they have awesome pizza in Fire Island, but they really don't have much of anything else. There's no restaurants, anything like that. Basically, you just have to like cook at your house. Um, and I did not feel like cooking, so I ate pizza all weekend long. That's the only thing I ate was pizzas. Um, so that night, that huge mansion party at Viagra Falls that we went to, um, that night it was turning into a Bergenheim party. And I didn't know what Bergenheim was. Apparently it's this club in Berlin and it's very exclusive and not a lot of people get granted entry, but it's a fetish club where anything goes down and people express their most out there 
fetishes and it's accepted. So they're throwing a bird kind of party. Everyone dresses black, gothic, like, like heavy metal streetwear. And I didn't get the memo, so I'm wearing <laughs> like Abercrombie underwear and then baggy jeans um, and like a white tank top. So <laughs> I was not on theme. Um, and they made it just like Bergenheim because they made a long line and they made the entry difficult. So we're waiting in line um, and it's really building up the excitement to go to this party. And once we're inside, it's like fast techno music. Um, and people were saying, they're like, this, it really, they hit the vibe for Bergenheim. Like, they hit the nail right on the head for the theme. So it was super cool to experience that. And this party was just another free for all. And I had like one of my best hookups there um, with this guy who's a little bit older, but he's really cool. Um, apparently he's from Fort Lauderdale too. <laughs> I've never seen him before. Um, but yeah, basically that party was awesome. Just like danced, but I was more on the hunt for <laughs> So I was not around my friends that much at that party. Um, and then the Sunday after, just went to the beach and enjoyed, like, all that Fire Island has to offer. Had a beautiful beach day, then went to, um, a pool party, and, and everyone was, like, splashing the music, and it was, like, something out of a movie scene. It was beautiful, and it really wrapped up my weekend in Fire Island, and... It was just one of the best experiences of my life. If you've never been, I seriously recommend you go. Um, and if you have a house there, invite me. <laughs> I've never been passed around so much in my life. <laughs> We're basically gang <laughs> So, uh, that happened. That happened. I, yeah, my body count went up to seven people after that night. So... <laughs> But you already know this is the PG version, so let's keep it moving. If you want this story time with all the dirty details and talking about all the exciting parts, you gotta go to my OnlyFans, click the link down in the description. I swear to God, you're gonna love these stories. If you're looking for one of my story times on YouTube with more action, then I'm going to drop a playlist right after this video. Um, with all my other story times about when I was first getting into sex work. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. And have a great day, gold diggers. Never stop. I'll never stop. stop.